What is up, you guys? This is your boy Andy Matrix. I talk about anime, manga, video games, geek culture, and Japanese culture. Now, I'm here at Screen Rant, and we're going to talk about once again Sony and the business of buying other companies. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit the notification bell. Like this video. I'm going to join to get 1,000 subscribers, and I very much appreciate your help. Now, it says Sony. Will Sony buy Ubisoft or Square Enix? Now, or both. And I'm going to give you my honest opinion. I see Sony, you know, having a better relationship with Square Enix than they do with Ubisoft. Although I think that, you know, I, I, I do see them buying both companies, but um, we're going we're gonna to find out in a moment whether if it's a good idea or not. It says many have been curious how Sony will respond to Microsoft's acquisition of, of Activision Blizzard. Will they buy up more industry to get even? We shall see. Okay. It says, after the monumental purchase of Activision Blizzard by Microsoft, a conversation has sparked about whether the future of the industry will fall into the hands of a few major companies such as Sony. And honestly, this, this is happening all over, you know, all over the world. You have Amazon buying up companies. You know, it's, it's just, it, 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 they're, they're saying monopoly. They're saying monopoly. This used to be illegal, but now companies have found ways to make it legal by basically buying shares of one company. And so it says, um, which some have speculated might be looking to buy Ubisoft or Square Enix. Activision Blizzard purchases uh, gives Microsoft and Xbox a huge chunk of the industry. It is it, as its acquisition are publishers that have multiple studios under them, such as Raven Software, Infinity Ward, Vicarious Visions. Now the focus is on Sony and if they will look to, to purchase major studios in response, particularly Ubisoft and Square Enix. Again, Square Enix. Um, they've always had a close relationship with them. And honestly, the see, but, but here's the problem. Just because Microsoft bought, you know, this many gaming studios does not mean that Sony have to go into the same. You know, they really have to think their, think about their strategy and how they're going to go about cloud gaming. Because the reason, the entire reason why they're buying out these companies is so that they can push cloud gaming. And in the future, nobody will own a console. People will either play from their computer, from their, and you don't, and in the future, you won't necessarily need to buy a, a top of the line gaming computer. Okay. That's, that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of cloud gaming. And the flaw is that you won't need us, you know, you're not going to physically own anything such as a console or, or game or disc cassettes, you know, that's, that's basically how it's going to be. I mean, their software is not like, uh, like shadow gaming, shadow PC where you basically subscribe to this service for $30 and basically you can, you, you can connect to a cloud and you can run your games on a cloud rather than your own PC and it save and it saves you computing power. That means you can basically, you know, play whatever kind of game that you would on a gaming PC in, in you know, in, on the cloud and you wouldn't need to buy a really a $2,000, $3,000 expensive laptop. Kind of like I did. And then it goes on to say here on screen where it says Sony is already seeing class action losses because of these uh, exclusive deals. Gee, I wonder why. The acquisition being made are, are that Sony's exclusivity is anti-consumer and allegedly monopolizing the PlayStation Store's digital downloads and pricing. Uh, I mean, it is a monopoly, actually. That's exactly what it is. Given the legal waters that Sony is already th uh, threading and possibly the Microsoft's purchase to further complicate things, will Sony take the risk of buying two more large uh, pu publishers i mean i don't see why they wouldn't i don't see why they wouldn't you know uh it will be beneficial for their store first of all okay and this is not this is not the first time sony has experienced lawsuit when sony bought crunchyroll and funimation <laughs> you know they um you know the uh the law basically halted you know stopped their purchase so they you know they couldn't just buy it right away they had to go through a whole you know system of um uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They were stopped by the law from purchasing Crunchyroll and Funimation. Let's just say that. And the same thing is happening with this, with the acquisition of Fungi. Uh, what's it? Fun no, it's Bungie. What the hell am I talking about? Anyways, it says many may not know that these two companies are own a collection of subs subsidiaries that develop their games. Square Enix, for example, generally credited for Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy series are compromised. The studios like Eidos Montreal. Vision Works and Crystal Dynamics, 
The last of which is rumored to be developing another Tomb Raider game. Square Enix is already flirting with PlayStation. Exclusivity for Forsaken, which is only releasing PlayStation 5 and, P and PC. So a purchase of the company doesn't seem out of the question. Yeah, but here, here's, here's, the, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Sony buys Square Enix. And then because if they buy Square Enix, they will also own the subsidiarities of Square Enix, such as Visions and Crystal Dynamics. They're going to own it. So it's like they're going to basically own everything. <laughs> you know, they're going to have a huge monopoly, just like Microsoft. And there's a lot of legal issues there. He said the same can be said for Ubisoft, which is generally credited when discussing titles like Assassin's Creed, Rainbow Six, and then recently released Writer's Republic. But the, but the reality is that all of the games are developed by different studios under the Ubisoft umbrella. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was developed in Ubisoft Quebec. Assassin's Creed Valhalla was developed in Ubisoft Montreal. Those two companies may sound like semantics given, given of the Sony prefix, but they are different studios in the same way that Red Storm Entertainment and Blue Mammoth are. Holy smoke, I did not know that. I mean, you would think that Ubisoft is just Ubisoft, but I guess Ubisoft owns all these studios and then, you know, they just kind of... Anyways, so, and I'm going to get to the last point here of this article. A major point here, it says, although this is all speculation, Sony seems to have more to lose if, if it were to buy Ubisoft and Square Enix. Yeah, because unlike Bungie, if they're going to buy Square Enix, they're going to have to spend like 10 billion, 20 billion. I say 20 billion. And then combined with Ubisoft, that's going to be about 40 billion or maybe 50. Who knows? It's, it's a lot of freaking money. So then, and then they're going to have to try and make that money back. You know, and how are they going to do that when they still don't have enough subscribers for for cloud gaming which is why they're doing the whole acquisition in the first place it says uh sony already profits more than most of its competitors with an increasing roster of good exclusive games and and one of the reasons why i think sony acquiring square enix and i say that if they're going to acquire anybody acquire square enix and leave ubisoft alone because you know they have a good long relationship with square enix and then you know, they'll, they'll definitely have, then they'll have Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, you know, in their belt. And I mean, after all, like, since the 2000s, you know, Xbox has always been known for shooting games. And then Sony has always been known for adventure games, RPG games, and some shooting games. Let's just put it that way. Um, it says, in the case of Sony existing lawsuit, it, it's easy to feel... Like companies that big can get away with bad practices. But the case against Apple, which is also more profitable than Microsoft, shows that this isn't always the case. Putting all legal considerations aside, it might be it might be a decision that wouldn't go over well with gamers. Yeah, because of the monopoly. Exactly. It wouldn't go well with gamers if like one company owns everything. And much like what's happening with you know, with like the anime industry and the movie industry, when one company owns everything, they tell other other sub companies or, or sub businesses um to basically change things in in their movies in their tv shows in their games it's happening when they and in the animation industry with anime with american movies it's happening all over the place you know and then the and then directors creators you know they have to bend the knee they have to bend the knee as to what is it that they want to do and how they want to you know what they're what's allowed in their game what's not allowed in their game so it's like you know and then, of course, there's the whole issue of censorship, which we're going to see more of that in the future, especially if Sony acquires all these companies. I mean, we already saw it with, you know, how Sony changed, changed things up in Final Fantasy and, and other games. You know, uh, people are starting to call Sony, Sony, you know, for soy. <laughs> all right. So uh, then it says, um, it says, and with, with many already looking at services like Game Pass as an in incentive to switch to Microsoft. It could turn out to be the nail in the coffin. Yeah, and this is this is competition. This is competition. But what, what you got to understand as well is that, yeah, the Game Pass is very affordable. It's a very attractive option. But it all depends on what kind of games you play. You know, I, I'm an RPG lover. Okay, I, I play RPG games, action RPGs, Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts. Like, I, there's no reason for me to sign up for, for um, Xbox Game Pass. Okay. I'm not a shooter type of person, like Call of Duty type, which is basically the kind of games you find on the Game Pass. 
So, which is why Sony needs to reconsider, you know, their their plans of, of, of continuing to purchase other other companies, like. And which leads me to what Nintendo is doing, okay? Because Nintendo, they know who they are. They know their identity as a corporation and as the type of types of games that they make. So Nintendo, they themselves says, if you look at here at Polygon.com, they have absolutely no interest in acquiring other gaming studios like Microsoft and and Sony. You know, they, they're they're staying more traditional. Although there is the the Nintendo Game Cloud, and you know, uh, Square Enix recently. They, uh, they put Kingdom Hearts on the Nintendo Game Cloud, which is just god-awful. It's just god-awful. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who's, who's, who's using that. You know, it's just, it's just, it's not at the same quality as Microsoft Game Pass. So, and which is why Nintendo is staying more traditional. You know, I think even after, okay, even after Sony and xbox they decide to go completely you know digital and publish no no consoles right nintendo will still will still keep you know pushing their consoles you know the next the next nintendo switch is going to be a killer um i, I, I don't know if it's going to be better than, than devolve steam deck but Obviously, it's going to make their titles, uh, you know, much better looking, much, much more, much more realistic. They'll, we'll be able to play PlayStation 4 types of games in this in the Nintendo Switch 2. Let's just put it that way. Going to be way better, and I'm definitely going to get one. And um, yeah, it, I, I say Nintendo that, you know, they're they're slow to adapt. They're slow to adapt, and they they kind of just always done their own thing. You know, they have a lot of gamers, they have a lot of users on the Nintendo platform, and they don't really need to acquire so many companies. That being said, as the, um, as the, uh, one of the leaders on the Nintendo, well, the, the Nintendo president said, is that they're not completely against a acquisition, you know, because Nintendo did, did buy, uh, Next Level Gaming, which is a studio that designed Luigi's Mansion. They're not, they're not against acquisition. But you see, they know who they are as a gaming company. The reason why they bought Next Level Gaming is because, you know, it's, it, it's, it's part of the Nintendo DNA, as they say up here. So Furukawa, the president of Nintendo, says, Our brand was built upon products crafted with, dedicated, with dedication by our employees. And having a large number of employees who don't possess Nintendo DNA in our group would not be a plus to the company, said Furukawa. And this is great. And it's actually more organized. <laughs> You know, it's better to have a it's better to have a good direction and uh, and keep and, and keep making money for your company rather than just copy your opponent and try to you know try to do this business model that you know that you're not 100 sure if it'll work out for your business. So they're making a good decision. And then he says, uh, however, the president also said that he isn't entirely against acquisition. Uh, for example, just Nintendo. But no. Actually, excuse me, guys. I already read that part. But you guys get the point. Nintendo Nintendo got their shit together. You know, the reason why they're not in a hurry to push for the Nintendo Switch Part 2, Nintendo Switch 2, is because the Nintendo Switch in general is doing great. I mean, take a look at the new Pokemon game, Pokemon Arceus, which is an open-world Pokemon game. It's, it's doing really good. It sold millions of copies already in, like, the first few days. And most likely, it's going to sell millions more. You know, um... Animal Crossing sold 20 million copies during the pandemic. Okay. Nintendo games will always sell because they are about fun. They're not about graphics. You know, unlike Sony and Microsoft, their games are about graphics. <laughs> but Nintendo games have always revolved around fun and community. Right? So Nintendo is very is, is self-sustained. They are a self-sustainable company. All right, guys. So I'm going to leave it there. And uh, whatever your thoughts are on these acquisitions and the way these, these gaming companies are going, make sure to comment below. Make sure to like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video. This is Andy Matrix. Godspeed.